Hi, this is Glenn at Switch Up, and today we are bringing you 10 games for under £10 or $13.53, judging by the current exchange rate. Yeah, nice one, Glenn, but as you say, it doesn't have quite the same ring to it, does it? 10 games for under $13.53. Yeah, doesn't really work. Okay, and our first game is Skyforce Reloaded. This is a top-down shooting game, which is similar to Strikers 1945, but has a more modern aesthetic. The graphics here are lovely, and although it was a mobile game originally, they've done a great job bringing it to the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, nice one. I do like me a good shoot 'em up. Right, my first pick is Blaster Master Zero, which came out really early in the Switch's life. It's a remake of the NES classic. You play a boy who's looking for his pet frog, and whilst looking, he uncovers a tank, and their adventure starts from there. A very bizarre story for sure. The game isn't as punishing as the NES original. It has more frequent checkpoints, and it's done in the style of the original game. It's a lovely game, really well worth picking up, and you get about 10 hours worth of gameplay out of it. Nice one, Glenn. Okay, so the next game we have is Rogue Aces. Now, I reviewed this one recently. This one's an arcade-style 2D shooter that uses an accurate flight model. The developer Infinite State Games has already built a bit of a reputation for making hugely addictive games, and this is definitely one you should pick up. It's death time! Take care, as much as you can, firing at things in a plane. My next pick is one that came out fairly recently and it's called Goshia. I think I'm pronouncing that right. This is quite a difficult one to describe. It's almost like a 2D version of Layers of Fear. You play as a girl that's returning to her family home and she's uncovering some of the secrets and some of the things that have been happening since she's been away. I don't want to say too much more in terms of story because I don't want to spoil anything, but it's kind of a mystery horror-ish type game with elements of points and click in there as well. It's quite a unique one this, have a look at it. Much has changed. My family is missing. And the house, it's not the same. Something else as well. As a massive point and click fan, I'm definitely gonna give this one a look. Okay, to picture Ghana, you've got to imagine games like The Binding of Isaac combined with a 2D side-scrolling platformer. It's quite an unusual mixture, I'm sure you can imagine, and it has a lot of procedural generation in the levels. For many people, this puts them off straight away, but actually it's done really well here. The levels are very enjoyable, and there's an item system very similar to The Binding of Isaac, whereby you collect items on each run that remain for the next one. This is definitely interesting and worth you looking at if you're a fan of games like Super Meat Boy. That was actually one of those games that passed me by and I meant to pick up. My next pick is a game called Degeneration HD. Now this is a remake of an older game from the home computer era and when I first played this the remake graphic style really put me off. It just looks quite cheap and a bit nasty to be honest. Having looked past that though and got to the gameplay it's really fun. It's an isometric puzzle game, I suppose you could call it, where you have to clear rooms in an office block and save hostages after a disaster has happened. It's one of those games that will either grab you or it won't. There's a lot to like about it though if you can look past the visuals and if you get on board with the gameplay. This is the second game in our list by the developer Infinite State Games, who also made Rogue Aces. 
Don't Die Mr. Robot is a bit of a high score chasing game in the vein of Pac-Man. Now that might not grab you instantly, but this one's worth checking out. It's incredibly addictive, and although the graphics didn't exactly sell me on the game, the gameplay more than makes up for that. Okay, Glenn's going to introduce an absolute classic of a game. Yeah, cheers Mark. My next one is Metal Slug. Now to be honest, I could have put any number of the Arcade Archives Neo Geo games on here because I absolutely love them all, but Metal Slug is going to be my choice. It's a classic run and gun game, very chaotic, very fast paced, loads of fun. There are quite a few of these available on the eShop and most people prefer the third game in the series. Me personally though, I like the simplicity of the first one. It's nice and short, nice and concise, huge replay value. It's a cracking game this one. Right, Mark, I think this is your last one now, isn't it? Yeah, cheers, Glenn. And next up, we've got Riptide Renegade. Now, for those fans of the original Wave Race games, this is really going to bring back some good memories. The game has a lots and lots of content, including a really nice rags-to-riches story mode, which isn't something you usually see in a racing game. It's definitely one you might want to check out. Okay, and that brings me to the end of my five, but Glenn has one more left to go. My last one is Hammer Watch. Now, I reviewed this game a few months ago. It's a roguelike game in the same vein as Binding of Isaac or Enter the Gungeon. It's got that pixel art that's becoming quite common these days, although it's done very, very well. It also has a Dungeons and Dragons vibe to it, and you can choose to be characters such as wizards, sorcerers, knights, etc. Due to the roguelike nature of this game, you could get as many hours as you want out of it. And it's not as punishingly difficult as some of the other roguelikes that are available on the Switch. This one is great value for money and well worth picking up. Cheers guys, we really hope that you've enjoyed our list videos and this is our top 10 for under 10 or $13.53. Cheers guys, keep your switch up and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching everyone and as always, happy gaming.